The earthquake has stopped. You have 20 minutes, maybe less. In those 20 minutes, you need to make decisions that will determine whether you live or die, where you go, what you grab, who you try to save. When a megathrust earthquake strikes offshore, like the Manila Trench, the Philippine Trench, or any of the major subduction zones surrounding the Philippines, the tsunami that follows will give you almost no time to react. Most people won't know what to do. They'll waste precious minutes in confusion. They'll make mistakes that cost them their lives. But if you know what to do right now, before the tsunami comes, your chances of survival increase dramatically. This is your tsunami survival guide. What to do in the first 20 minutes. How to recognize the warning signs, where to go, what mistakes to avoid, and how to prepare your family today so that when the tsunami warning comes, you're ready. Because one day it will come, and 20 minutes might be all you get. Before we talk about what to do during a tsunami, you need to understand what a tsunami actually is. Because it's not what most people think. A tsunami is not a single wave. It's a series of waves, sometimes 10 or more, that can continue for hours. The first wave is often not the biggest. The second, third, or fourth wave might be larger and more destructive. A tsunami is not like an ocean wave that surfers ride. Those waves are caused by wind and are only a few meters deep. A tsunami is caused by the displacement of the entire water column from the surface to the ocean floor. That means a tsunami wave can be hundreds of meters deep, carrying enormous energy. A tsunami doesn't just rise like a flood. It hits like a wall of water moving at highway speeds, 60 to 100 kilometers per hour when it reaches shallow water. And it doesn't just push water forward. It pulls water back out to sea with equal force. That's why the initial receding of water from the shore is one of the warning signs. A tsunami carries debris, cars, boats, buildings, trees, and anything else in its path. The water itself is deadly, but so is everything the water carries. Being hit by a car traveling at 80 kilometers per hour in a wall of water is just as deadly as drowning. And finally, a tsunami doesn't stop at the shoreline. It can travel several kilometers inland, especially in low-lying areas, along river channels, and through drainage systems. Understanding this is critical. Because your survival strategy isn't about riding out a tsunami, it's about getting as far away from the coast and as high above sea level as possible before the water arrives. There are natural warning signs that a tsunami is coming. If you recognize them, you might have a few extra minutes to escape, and those minutes could save your life. The first and most obvious warning sign is the earthquake itself. If you feel a strong earthquake and you're near the coast, assume a tsunami is coming. Don't wait for official warnings. Don't wait to see if the water recedes. Start moving to high ground immediately. Here's the rule. If the earthquake is strong enough that you can't stand up, or if it lasts longer than 30 seconds, treat it as a tsunami threat and evacuate immediately. In the Philippines, if you feel a strong earthquake along the coast, especially in areas near the Manila Trench, Philippine Trench, Cotabato Trench, or East Luzon Trench, don't wait. Move. The second warning sign is the water receding from the shore. Before a tsunami arrives, the water often pulls back dramatically. You might see the seafloor exposed, boats grounded in areas that were underwater minutes ago, fish flopping on exposed sand. This is not the time to go look. This is not the time to collect shells or fish. This is your warning that the wave is coming and you have minutes, not hours. When the water recedes, the wave is already approaching. You might have five to 10 minutes before it hits. Run, don't look back. The third warning sign is unusual ocean behavior, rapid rising or falling of water, strong currents where there shouldn't be any, the ocean making loud roaring sounds like a freight train or jet engine. If you see or hear any of these, evacuate immediately. The fourth warning sign, and the one that most people will rely on, is an official tsunami warning. In the Philippines, Pivuel CS issues tsunami warnings after detecting offshore earthquakes. These warnings are broadcast on TV, radio, social media, and through emergency alert systems on mobile phones. But here's the problem. Official warnings might not reach you in time. Mobile networks can be overloaded or damaged by the earthquake. Power outages might knock out TV and radio. Internet might be down. That's why you can't rely only on official warnings. 
you need to recognize the natural warning signs yourself. If you feel a strong earthquake near the coast, don't wait for confirmation. Don't wait to see if a tsunami is really coming. Assume it is and act immediately. Those first few minutes after the earthquake stops are critical. What you do in those minutes will determine whether you survive. Here's what you need to do, step by step, in order of priority. Step one, stay calm and assess your situation immediately. The moment the earthquake stops, ask yourself, am I in a tsunami zone? How far am I from the coast? How high above sea level am I? Do I have a clear route to higher ground? If you're within two kilometers of the coast and less than 10 meters above sea level, you are in immediate danger. You need to move now. Step two, alert everyone around you. Shout, bang on doors, tell people a tsunami is coming. Don't assume they know. In the chaos after an earthquake, many people will be confused, in shock or injured. They might not realize the tsunami threat. Help them if you can, but don't put yourself at risk. Step three, grab only what you absolutely need. Your phone if it's within reach. Your wallet or ID if it's in your pocket. Shoes if you're barefoot. Maybe a bottle of water. That's it. Don't waste time looking for belongings. Don't go back inside buildings to get things. Every second counts. Here's what you should not grab. Documents, valuables, electronics, extra clothes, food. None of that matters if you're dead. Move first, survive first, replace belongings later. Step four, start moving to high ground immediately. Don't wait, don't hesitate. Don't discuss the plan with others, just go. The goal is simple, get as far from the coast and as high above sea level as possible in the shortest amount of time. If you're in a coastal barangay, like Navotas, Malabon, or Tondo in Metro Manila, you're in a low-lying area. You need to move inland, away from Manila Bay, at least two to three kilometers, or reach an elevation of at least 10 to 15 meters above sea level. If you can't move inland fast enough, your next option is vertical evacuation, getting to the upper floors of a strong, tall building. More on that in a moment. Step five. Don't use your car unless absolutely necessary. Roads will be clogged with traffic. Bridges might be damaged. You might get stuck in a traffic jam when the tsunami hits and you'll have no way to escape. On foot, you can move through alleys, over fences and around obstacles. In a car, you're trapped. The only exception, if you're far enough from the coast that you have time to drive inland to high ground without getting stuck in traffic. But in most tsunami scenarios, walking or running is faster and safer. Step six, if you're with children, elderly or disabled family members, help them move, carry children, support the elderly. But if someone cannot move and you cannot carry them, you face an impossible choice. You cannot save someone if you die trying. This is the brutal reality of tsunamis. Sometimes you have to make terrible decisions. The best way to avoid this is to prepare now. Identify who needs help in your family. Plan how you'll move them. Practice evacuation drills. Don't wait until the tsunami is coming to figure this out. Step seven. If you're at the beach or near the water when the earthquake strikes, don't go back to your hotel or resort to get belongings. Don't go to the parking lot to get your car. Run directly inland or uphill. The water will arrive faster at beach level than anywhere else. Step eight. Follow evacuation routes if they exist. In some coastal areas, local governments have designated tsunami evacuation routes marked with signs. Follow them. They'll lead you to high ground or designated evacuation centers. But if no signs exist or you don't know where they are, use common sense. Move away from the coast and uphill. Head toward elevated areas, hills, mountains, high ground. Even a small hill 20 or 30 meters high can save your life. Step nine, don't stop moving until you reach safety. And safety means one of two things, high ground at least 15 to 20 meters above sea level and at least two kilometers inland, or the upper floors of a strong tsunami resistant building. Once you reach safety, stay there. Don't go back down. Remember, tsunamis come in multiple waves over several hours. The first wave might be small. The second or third could be much larger. Wait for official all clear from authorities before returning to low lying areas. Let's talk about vertical evacuation, using buildings as tsunami shelters. 
This should be your backup plan if you can't reach high ground in time. Not all buildings are safe in a tsunami. The water will destroy weak structures, especially older buildings not built to modern codes. But some buildings are strong enough to withstand the impact. Here's what makes a building tsunami resistant. First, it needs to be tall, at least four to five stories high. The tsunami might be 10 to 15 meters tall, so you need to be above that. Get to the fourth floor or higher if possible. Second, it needs to be made of reinforced concrete with a strong foundation. Steel frame buildings can work too, but wood, light materials, or poorly constructed buildings will collapse. Third, it needs to be structurally intact after the earthquake. If the building is already damaged, cracks in the walls, collapsed columns, tilted, it won't survive the tsunami. Don't go inside. Fourth, it needs to face the tsunami at an angle, not head on. Buildings perpendicular to the wave are more likely to collapse than buildings at an angle. If you identify a strong building and decide to use it for vertical evacuation, here's what to do. Get to the fourth floor or higher, not the second or third. Those floors will be underwater. Go as high as you can. Move to the side of the building facing away from the wave. The side facing the ocean will take the impact and might collapse. The inland side is safer. Stay away from windows. The water will shatter glass and flood through openings. Move to interior rooms or hallways. Stay there until the water recedes and all tsunami waves have passed. This could take hours. In Japan, vertical evacuation buildings are designated and reinforced specifically for tsunamis. The Philippines is beginning to implement this system in some coastal areas. If your barangay has designated tsunami evacuation buildings, know where they are and how to get there. But ideally, you don't rely on vertical evacuation you reach actual high ground. Buildings can collapse, high ground can't. Now let's talk about what you should do before a tsunami ever happens, because preparation is the difference between life and death. First, know if you're in a tsunami zone. FIVO LCS has tsunami hazard maps for the Philippines. Check if your barangay, city, or municipality is in a high-risk area. If you live within two kilometers of the coast and less than 10 meters above sea level, you're in a tsunami zone. Second, identify your evacuation route. Walk it. Time how long it takes. Can you reach high ground in 15 minutes? 20 minutes? If not, find a closer route or identify vertical evacuation buildings. Third, prepare an emergency kit, but keep it light. A small backpack with bottled water, one, two liters, non-perishable food, energy bars, canned goods, first aid supplies, flashlight and batteries, Whistle to signal rescuers if trapped. Phone charger or power bank. Copies of important documents in waterproof bag. Cash basic medications. Keep this bag near your door or in a place you can grab in seconds. Don't make it too heavy. You need to move fast. Fourth, practice family evacuation drills. Seriously, once every few months, practice evacuating your home and reaching your designated safe zone. Time it. Make it a game for kids so they remember. This will save lives. Fifth, teach children what to do. Kids need to know. If they feel a strong earthquake near the coast, they run to high ground immediately. They don't wait for adults. They don't stop to get toys. They run, and they know where to run. In Japan, school children practice tsunami drills regularly. That's why so many survived the 2011 tsunami. They knew exactly what to do. Sixth, establish a family communication plan. After a tsunami, phone networks might be down. Agree on a meeting point at high ground if you get separated. Designate an out-of-region contact person everyone can text or call to check in. Seventh, strengthen your home if possible. Elevate important belongings. Keep emergency supplies on upper floors. If you can afford it, retrofit your home to be more earthquake and flood resistant. Eighth, Stay informed. Follow FIVO LCS on social media. Sign up for emergency alerts. Know how to receive tsunami warnings on your phone. And finally, spread awareness. Share this information with your family, friends, and community. Most Filipinos don't know how to respond to a tsunami. The more people who are prepared, the more lives will be saved. People make fatal mistakes during tsunamis. Here are the most common ones and how to avoid them. Mistake one, waiting for official confirmation. Don't wait. 
If you feel a strong earthquake near the coast, evacuate immediately. Official warnings might not come in time. Trust your instincts. Mistake 2. Going to the beach to see the tsunami. This kills people every time. Curiosity is deadly. If you see the water receding or hear that a tsunami is coming, you run away, not toward it. Mistake 3. Returning too soon. Tsunamis come in waves over several hours. Just because the first wave has passed doesn't mean it's safe. Wait for official all clear from authorities. Mistake 4. Trying to save belongings. Your car, your TV, your jewelry, none of it matters. Move first. Replace things later. Mistake 5. Underestimating the water. Tsunamis aren't like normal floods. The water moves fast and hits hard. Even one meter of moving water can sweep you off your feet and kill you. Even 15 centimeters of fast-moving water can knock you down. Don't try to walk or drive through it. Mistake 6. Not helping others. If you can alert your neighbors, do it. If you can help someone move, do it. Community survival increases everyone's chances. But don't risk your own life for someone who refuses to evacuate. Mistake 7. Not preparing in advance. The time to figure out your evacuation plan is not when the ground is shaking. It's now, today. Let's talk about what happens after the tsunami. You've survived. You're on high ground. The waves have passed. Now what? First, stay where you are until authorities give the all clear. This might take hours or even days. Tsunamis can continue for 12 to 24 hours after the initial earthquake. Second, check yourself and others for injuries. Treat wounds. Help those who need medical attention. Third, try to contact family members. Text messages often work even when calls don't. Let people know you're safe. Fourth, stay informed. Listen to radio, check social media if you have service, or wait for announcements from authorities. Fifth, do not return to coastal areas until it's safe. Don't go back to your home to check for damage or retrieve belongings. The area might still be flooded, buildings might collapse, and there could be more waves. Sixth, when you do return, be extremely cautious. Flood water can be contaminated with sewage, chemicals, and debris. Buildings might be structurally damaged and could collapse. Gas lines might be ruptured. Power lines might be down. Seventh, document damage for insurance or aid purposes. Take photos, make lists. This will help with recovery. And finally, help your community recover. Disasters bring out the best and worst in people. Be part of the best. Help neighbors. Share resources. Rebuild together. If the Manila Trench ruptures tomorrow, if the Philippine Trench generates a magnitude 9 earthquake, if a tsunami warning is issued for your area, will you survive? The answer depends on what you do right now, not when the earthquake happens, not when the tsunami warning sounds. Now, because when the ground stops shaking and you have 20 minutes to reach high ground, there's no time to plan, no time to think, no time to prepare. You either already know what to do, or you don't. And that difference determines whether you live or die. So here's what you do today. Find out if you're in a tsunami zone. Identify your evacuation route. Walk it. Time it. Prepare your emergency kit. Teach your family. Practice evacuation drills. And when the tsunami warning comes, and one day it will, you'll be ready. 20 minutes, that's all you get. Make them count. If you found this video helpful, share it with everyone you know who lives near the coast. Post it on social media. Send it to family and friends. This information saves lives. Subscribe for more disaster preparedness and survival guides for the Philippines, because the best time to prepare for a disaster is before it happens. And remember, you can't stop a tsunami, but you can survive one. If you know what to do, stay safe, stay prepared, and when the time comes, move fast.